Chrissy. I hope you're having an amazing, amazing week. Today I'm really excited because um, I have been able to really start um, tasting and smelling again. So I lost my sense of taste and my sense of smell for, for a while and um, while I was unwell. And um, man, if you know me and you know my friends, we love to eat and we love to eat together. And so not being able to, to, to taste my food um, was really, really, really disappointing. But um, it has slowly been coming back, but this week especially it's just getting better and better and I can really taste what I'm eating. Um, so I'm trying not to pig out um, out of my excitements. I'm doing my best, um, but I'm definitely enjoying my food and appreciating the fact that I can taste it and I can enjoy it. So, so it's a big deal for me. But today's video I want to talk about one of my favorite topics and if you've done the J Revolution program uh, we've taught this to you you understand it inside out because we kind of drum it into your head so so you can explain this to somebody in your sleep but you know what a bit of refreshment is not a bad thing and if you haven't done our program maybe this is something you could be hearing for the first time um, so so I want to talk about the incredible way that we have been made we have been made in the most incredible way and the Bible actually tells us how we've been made um, and how we've been fashioned and it's so important for us to understand this. I'm going to talk about why it's important for us to understand this. Sometimes we don't really know how much it affects us um, in terms of having a lack of understanding around this. Okay, but if you go to Genesis 1 verse 26, it says uh, when God was creating human beings, um, he had already created creation, he had created creatures, but he says something very specific about the human being. He says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Okay, so we've been fashioned after God, but it's interesting that he doesn't say my image. He says our image, which gives us a clue as to how we are made. Because if you study the Bible, God is made up of three parts. He's one God, but he's made up of three parts. We often explain it like an orange. An orange is one orange, but it's made up of different parts. It has a skin, it has juice, it has pulp. Um, so one God, but different parts. It's exactly the same for the human being. Um, God is a tripart being. We are also a three-part being. So we have a body, okay? Our body is our physical body. Eventually our body will die. We have a soul. Our soul is made up of this area, okay? It's our mind, will, and emotions. And we have a spiritual man. We have to understand that ultimately, above all, we are spiritual beings. Even though our body may die, our spirits will never die. That is why death is something that's not natural to us. It came into the world many thousands of years as a result of um, the fall of man, the fall of Adam, and sin entering the world. But naturally, we we we're not. Uh, we don't find death. Um, as something natural. It's something that's foreign to us. It's difficult for us to get our minds around it, but we are spiritual beings and we live in a body. Okay? Now, our spirit is made up of our spiritual man, so it's that part of us that interacts with the spiritual world. And our conscience sits in our spiritual man, our intuition sits in our spiritual man. Okay? And so there's these three parts. And the problem is that a lot of people confuse their soul and their spirit. And we can't confuse these two. Um, it causes a lot of problems. We need to understand our makeup and our entire program, everything we teach, we always bring it back to how we've been made. How does this apply to your body, your soul, and your spirit? Because when you live and you understand those things and you apply the truth of the Word of God to those different parts of you, then you really start living a fulfilling, overcoming life, okay? So body, soul, and spirit made in the image of God, who's a tripart being, we're also a three-part being, all right? Now, why is it important to understand how you have been made? Okay, well, number one is um, the Bible says that we have been fearfully and wonderfully made. It means that when God made you, He put a lot of thought into you. He, he put a lot of thought into your personality, your characteristics. Um, he put a lot of thought into how you would look, okay? A lot of us define or we judge ourselves by how we look according to worldly standards. But God made you exactly the way you were supposed to be. God never made a mistake with you, okay? And since you are precious and important in the eyes of God, that's all that matters. Even if people may make you feel you're not important or make you feel like you're not good enough, no, that, that doesn't matter because that's a lie, okay? The, the truth is you've been fearfully and wonderfully made. You're one of God's incredible creations, okay? And you've been fashioned after Him. Number two, why it's important to understand that is that God doesn't make mistakes, okay? He didn't make a mistake with how you look. He never made a mistake with your gender, yeah? 
Some people are teaching today, you could be a man trapped in a woman's body or vice versa. Guys, that's just not true. I know this is not popular. I know people might not like it, but that is just not true. God does not make mistakes. Okay. Um, we use, what is it, between 9 and 11% of our brains. I'm not sure exactly what it is. And we think that we really understand our makeup and we understand, we understand God. But guys, God doesn't make mistakes. If there's one thing we must know and what the word says and teaches us about God. And even if you have a relationship with God, you'll understand this. He never made a mistake. Okay. If you're struggling with some of these things, it's a deeper spiritual, um, spiritual thing, which brings me to my third point. Okay. We need to understand that a lot of the symptoms that are coming up in our body and our soul are actually um, born or coming out of our spiritual lives or our spiritual man. Okay, for example, sin is something that affects us spiritually, but it also affects the rest of our, uh, our bodies, it also affects our souls, okay? So sin, when it's not dealt with, it moves down from generation to generation. Abuse moves down from generation to gener generation. Addiction, generation to generation. Divorce, generation to generation. Sexual brokenness, generation to generation. Um, my family, we, we've, one of our struggles is depression, yeah? And for example, we will try and deal with that in the soul realm. So we'll go maybe to a psychologist, we'll take antidepressants, and so many of my family members have or are on antidepressants, okay? And for example, that happened to me as I started growing up, I started struggling with depression. And I almost went down that road of, antidepressants and going to psychologists and all this stuff and I actually I started it and I realized very quickly it's not working this is just something that's dealing with the symptoms but it's really actually not working and I realized that there was a spiritual problem and it came from previous generations of my family yeah and I dealt with it spiritually you know what guys I don't suffer with depression I don't get depressed easily yeah that is not my thing yeah that does not define me because since I dealt with it spiritually, it has, it's been gone. I don't need to be on antidepressants. I don't need to spend all my money on psychologists. I don't need to do that stuff because I dealt with it in the right way. And if you don't understand where something's coming from or you're dealing with it the wrong way, if you're trying to deal with something that's coming from your spiritual life, in your soul or your body, it's just not going to work. And you will spend the rest of your life treating the symptoms, but never getting to the root of the problem. And guys, you must understand the biggest need that we have as mankind right now, the biggest crisis we have is not a poverty crisis it's not a COVID crisis our biggest crisis is a spiritual crisis all of the things that come as a symptom of that COVID poverty war all of these things um, that is a symptom of something that is wrong spiritually okay and God actually came even though we are the ones that sin we allowed sin in the world we made that decision to separate ourselves from God God made a way for us to be reconnected back to him okay and so your family history of addiction does not have to be your story your family history of depression does not have to be your story or your legacy your family history of divorce and broken families does not need to be your story okay that can be dealt with okay and God dealt with it on the cross through Jesus Christ and you need to make a decision do you want to just live a life where you're dealing with the symptoms of previous generations um, sins or things that maybe you have opened yourself up to or do you want to deal with that and you want to overcome overcome those things and if you do guys I will always say it come and do our program we we talk about these things we explain these things we understand we explain how you how you can overcome it what you need to do what truths you can apply to the different parts of you whether the problem is coming from your body soul and spirit how to deal with that and our program is totally free anybody can sign up to do it we do it every quarter um, if that's you we invite you to do that um, if, if that's something you want to do but guys you have been made in an incredible way okay there were no mistakes when you were made yeah you are fearfully and wonderfully made maybe other people don't like you your personality I mean of my whole life people have always said I'm too loud I'm too bossy all of these things but you know what I've known God loves it yeah and he made me like that for a reason for my purpose and my calling he made me like that and so many things that people have told you that's wrong with you let me tell you they may not like it but I can guarantee you God probably likes it, yeah? He, well, I can guarantee you, guarantee you he does like it. He loves that about you because he made you like that. So celebrate who you are and know that there is a way for you to come back into relationship with God. And when you do all of those spiritual issues and things that you may be struggling will get dealt with and get sorted out. 
It gets sorted out in him. There is no other way. There are not many ways, okay, it gets sorted out in him. He provided the way for us to 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 gain um, our spiritual rebirth, gain our, our spiritual healing, okay? He made a way for us to do that. So guys, that's it for me. I hope that it helped you. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.